Okay everyone, today I'm going to be splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen by hand. So I'm going to be using my own muscle power to actually split water up into its individual components of oxygen and hydrogen. And hopefully in showing you these things, you'll understand a little bit more about the concept of energy and work in physics, and also help dispel some myths about perpetual motion machines. So in a previous video, I took up the task of trying to break up a really big molecule called polyethylene glycol. And I showed you how you could actually do it using a blender. So this molecule was really long and it gets tangled around each other and if you actually just physically mix it a lot, you can break up those molecules. But the problem with water is that it's so small. Compared to polyethylene glycol, the kind I used had a molecular weight of around a million whereas water has a molecular weight of around 18. That's because water is literally just an atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen bonded together. Now one of the problems with trying to separate water is first, how do you get a knife small enough to cut a molecule of oxygen in half? And second, even if you could cut it in half, what happens to the electric charge that you create when you separate those two atoms, those three atoms from each other? Because even if we were able to physically separate the oxygen and two hydrogen atoms from each other, as soon as we did that, the oxygen is negative and the two hydrogens are positive now, and they'd, so they'd immediately attract each other and bond again together. So the way I'm going to be splitting water today is just through electrolysis, but the way I'm going to be doing it is actually physically turning a crank and feeling how much force it takes to generate the certain amount of hydrogen and oxygen. So let's check it out and see if I can actually do it. Okay, so in order to do this, first you need water, of course. Okay, so the way that we're going to get this to work comes from the fact that water isn't always just bound together as H2O. A lot of the molecules of water are actually split into a hydroxide ion and a hydrogen ion. So some of the water is actually already split up to start with, but it's always going back and forth. Some of it's always combining back together and then reforming water, and then some of it's also splitting apart and going back to hydrogen and hydroxide. But the point is, we wanna be able to keep these separate. And the reason these keep combining back together has to do with their charges here. Notice how they would naturally want to come together because of the positive charge and the negative charge here. For example, let's say we got four water molecules that had naturally split into four OH molecules and four H plus molecules. Well, before they could combine back together, let's say we just took this OH molecule here and pulled its electrons off. So you can see that there's four of these molecules, so there's four extra electrons here. So if we pull those four electrons off, we're left with two water molecules and one oxygen molecule. So, so far we've successfully pulled off an oxygen molecule that used to be part of water. And we did it by taking away these four electrons here. And what we can do with these four electrons here is now we can add them to these four hydrogens here. So if we get these four electrons and somehow add them to these four hydrogens here, then it'll form two molecules of hydrogen gas which will bubble out of the water. So you can see that if we're able to just transfer the electrons from these to these successfully without having them recombine, then we can successfully separate water into just oxygen gas and hydrogen gas that bubble out of the water. So the overall equation that happens here is two water molecules get converted into two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. And both of these just bubble out of the gas. So you've successfully separated this water into its individual components of hydrogen and oxygen, which is pretty cool. So in real life, how are we actually going to achieve this? So in order to do this, all you need is two electrodes. Now these electrodes can be made out of basically anything, anything that's conductive. I'm going to use graphite so that we don't get many side reactions happening because graphite is pretty inert. So what I'm going to do is manually create a positive voltage on here so that any electrons that are near it in these hydroxide ions are attracted to it and want to leave the hydroxide ion and go into this electrode. And like I said before, that will generate oxygen which will basically just bubble out. And so these electrons that came from these hydroxide ions then are going to get pushed through here and the work that's doing that, that's doing that pushing is going to come from me. I'm going to push these electrons to the other side here and that's where they can react with the hydrogen ions and they can become hydrogen gas 
which then bubbles out of solution. So it takes work to physically move these electrons from one side to the other. I have to generate this voltage through work. Okay, so first I get my water and then I'll just add some salt to it. And then these are my graphite electrodes. Now let me show you what I'm going to hook these to. Okay, so what I have in here is basically just a bunch of strong magnets with coils of copper wire wrapped around them. And I have um, some paper here that you can actually see the magnetic fields of the magnets. So you can see the magnets inside of them here. You can see there's a bunch of strong neodymium magnets in there. So you can see all the magnets around the outside here. Now the cool thing is, is when you turn magnets or move magnets near giant coils of wire, it generates a voltage in the wire. And so these are the two ends of all the coils of wire in there. And what that means is that when I turn this, I can generate a voltage. Now when they're not connected, notice how easy it is to turn. That's because I'm not actually moving or pushing any electrons through the wires because they're not connected so they have nowhere to go. But when I actually connect them, then it's much harder to turn. Let me show you when I put this crank on it. See how easy it is to turn? Now when I have them connected, they're connected together. Notice how it can't spin really on its own. I have to really crank it hard. And what's happening now is I just have it short circuited. So basically the wires are just connected. And so the electrons are just going around in a big loop, but it takes work to do that. It actually is pretty hard to turn this, even though it's completely short circuited. That's because the electrons are getting pushed through this sea of atoms and they all bump into each other and it generates heat. So basically all the work that I'm putting into it, it's just going into heating up the whole system. So what this means is the larger amount of current that I'm moving through the system, the more electrons that I'm able to move through the whole system, the harder it is to turn. And when I have a little current, then it's easy to turn. For example, if I put a resistor in here, which is basically just gonna lower the amount of current going through there, so now, I have this so now I have this resistor in here. Notice how it's still easy. But connect them completely together and it's hard again. So the main point here is to understand that it takes work to move electrons. So what I'm going to be doing here is just hooking these two to my electrodes and I'll be generating a positive and negative voltage on there. And so I'll be able to move the electrons from one electrode to the other and split water into its individual components of hydrogen and oxygen. But the benefit of this hand crank is I'll actually be able to fill the resistance, fill how much work it takes to move the electrons and actually physically split hydrogen and oxygen up. Okay, so I have my two wires connected to my two electrodes here. So let's see if this actually works. So, so as soon as I start cranking this, it should start to generate bubbles on both of these electrodes. Now the electrode that has hydrogen coming off of it, you should see about double the amount of gas than the one that has oxygen coming off of it. Because remember, there's two molecules of hydrogen created for every molecule of oxygen created. Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> So that's obviously the hydrogen one. And notice right when I stop, the bubbles go away. Whoa, look at that. So this is actually hard work to do. Notice how easy it is when it's out of the water. And as I put it in, it's gonna get harder. Already harder, a lot harder. That's because I'm having to move more electrons through this system. Look how much gas I'm generating now. Now if I smell this, I can also smell chlorine. That's because I put sodium chloride in it, so I'm also generating chlorine gas in this case. So to get rid of the side reaction, instead of salt, I just put in sodium hydroxide. Then I don't have to worry about generating chlorine gas. So with the sodium hydroxide, this is now a more pure reaction of just hydrogen and oxygen coming off the electrodes. You can actually see the oxygen coming off it a little better with this. 
See, but it takes a lot of work to do this. So the work that I'm putting in to separate these hydrogen and oxygen molecules from each other is now contained in the bonds of the hydrogen and oxygen. And they can reform again and get released as heat when I light them on fire. You can see how it burns easily. So the gas that's coming off of this is actually called hydroxy gas. It's just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen because I don't have these electrodes separated. So it mixes together and if you get a lot of that it's very explosive because hydrogen and oxygen mixed together in the perfect stoichiometric ratio is very explosive. So there you go, a hand crank hydrogen oxygen generator. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.